Time for this week's RSPW Rewind. This week, I was going through some threads, and I came across one about Papa Shango. I thought to myself, you know, that would be a good topic for this week. I mean, I could pretty much mix them up and talk about anything I want to, but let's see what I can find on good old Papa Shango. And I found a few more threads, and then I found some other ones, and I figured, let's just mush them all together. And so without any further ado, we get to this first post from Matt Kundal from March 10th, 1992. This is one of the oldest threads that I've been able to find and cover here on the show. 1992, a year that I have quite the fondness for, as you all know. He's got three questions. Now that LOD is out of the WWF, seeing as how they have not been mentioned and recently lost the titles, where did they go? Also, who the hell is Papa Shango? Aside from being totally repulsive on the tube, I am just looking for his Elias. We promise not to ever watch him nor appreciate him on the tube. And finally, I need some info on Marcus Alexander Bagwell. Somebody outrageously called him the ultimate warrior last week, and I laughed. But then again, I have no idea who he is or who he was. Well, I, I think we may have just found the earliest Buff Bagwell mention here on RSPW. Way back here in 1992. Jason Toast McDonald responds to uh, on the Papa Shango stuff. I kind of think he might be Kamala, but it's been so long since I've seen him, I really don't know. I guess they all just look the same to old McDonald. On Bagwell, Otto says... He was the handsome stranger in the GWF. Other than that, I don't think he's wrestled in any major league. Stefan says, Before being the handsome stranger in the GWF, Buff Bat... Or not, I can't call him Buff. If he would have called him Buff Bagwell in 1992, I'd like to track down Stefan. Now, he says, Bagwell wrestled under the name of Fabian in the Georgia All-Star Wrestling Area, a small but active indie group around Atlanta. He wrestled there for about two years and even captured their heavyweight belt. Uh, GAW sometimes runs cards with the G GWF around Atlanta. Joe Petticino used to announce on GAW. Bagwell went to Spayberry High School, located in Marietta, one of Atlanta's northeastern suburbs. See, some useful information here on RSPW back in the day. We're getting some biographical information. Back to Papa Shango. We skip ahead all the way to June 6, 1997. Believe it or not, I found very little on Papa Shango from that era that he actually was a character on TV. I found more on Papa Shango in the late 90s on RSPW than I did in 92 or 93. So we go all the way to June 6, 1997, and a post by Jeff Bullingham titled Papa Shango, The Undertaker, and The Grave. This should be good. Herb Kunze is reporting that the Observer claims eventually Paul Bear will reveal the mysterious third grave to be Mark Calloway, and or Mark Calloway's grave, and that he was brought back to life by the voodoo of Papa Shango, who has signed a four-year deal with the WWF. If this winds up coming true, God save us. This will be the dumbest gimmick the WWF has ever come up with, and I will suddenly be rooting for a complete ratings kill by WCW. Come on, Vince, you've come so far from your Red Rooster, Doink, and Dumpster days. Don't ruin it all now. And indeed, just to cut in here, there were rumors back in 97 when Charles Wright re-signed with uh, WWE that they had plans to resurrect the Papa Shango character, and in fact... Wright himself has confirmed it. He has done interviews over the years uh, saying that Papa Shango was going to return to WWE television in 1997. It was going to be a more gritty, realistic version of the character. He would have a mask instead of face paint. They created a new costume for him. They put together a new entrance for him. And then the decision was made to go with the Kane character instead. And he figures that there probably just wasn't enough room for two dark supernatural characters, and so instead he came back as Kama Mustafa. 
and they put him in the Nation of Domination. He even claimed that he still had some 8x10 photos. Some promo shots of him wearing the new mask and the new gear that they had made for him. I would love to see those 8x10s if he ever decides to share them. Keith Watanabe responds, I really can't see how McMahon can make this kind of decision. The revelation of Goldust and Mankind were great ways to add depth to their characters, but Papa Shango? The Dungeon of Doom did not work in WCW, and neither did Papa Shango. You would have thought that in the face of a ratings war, Vince would create more Austin clones to appease the hardcore fans, but nope. Vince and his stupid sense of humor. I can take Austin in the EMT seat beating up a cripple, which was exceptionally hilarious. Oh yeah, that's great, yeah. Our <laughs> RSPW dark humor. Uh, but Papa Shango was once before an embarrassment and a reason to switch channels. Now it'll be a reason to keep my TV off. I'm sorry, Vince, but if I wanted my intelligence to be insulted every day, I would just stay in college for the rest of my life. Or Keith can just watch Raw and SmackDown each week here 20 years later. That works, too. On July 3rd, 1997, James Fabiano came with a post called Papa Shango Undead Angle vs. The Kane Angle. Okay, RSPW had a lot of negative things to say when it was rumored that Papa Shango would be revealed to have brought The Undertaker back from the dead. And a lot of you have had negative things to say about The Kane Angle and The Undertaker having killed his parents' angle. That said, I just want to know which one do you think is or would have been worse? Tim chimed in. They could have announced that Undertaker was going over to Japan to learn how to become a better worker, and people would have complained. Let me stop there. <laughs> that would have been a great fucking angle. Holy shit. Undertaker goes to Japan to train in the New Japan Dojo. Undertaker becomes a young boy. What an angle that would have been. <laughs> Holy shit. He's right, by the way. You could have had Undertaker do that and people still would have complained because that's what wrestling fans do. That's what wrestling fans do. Tim continues, Complaining that a wrestling angle is stupid is like watching Power Rangers and complaining that its plot is too focused to five-year-olds. Let's be thankful it isn't 1991 all over again. That same day... On July 3rd, a user named Toxic had reached his breaking point, and he made a post titled, Undertaker Brother BS, It's Gotta Stop. I'm sick and tired of hearing everyone ask the same stinking question. Who is the Undertaker's brother going to be? Why don't you people shut the hell up and wait until Raw? It's not going to be Brian Lee, so stop saying so. That's almost as dumb as people saying Papa Shango will be involved in this angle. Kama is in the Nation of Domination already. He's not going to play two roles, so shut up. Brian Lee is in DOA. He's not going to play two roles either, so shut up. Dan Spivey is about the only person that seems to get suggested as much. That guy failed a WWF drug test. That's why Waylon Mercy suddenly retired for no reason. This is the stupidest damn angle in the history of the WWF. And yet it's monopolizing about 60% of the posts on RSPW. It is ridiculous. I hope Toxic is not still around today to see what happens when any of the wrestling groups on Facebook latch on to a, a subject or if there's a big news story. No one understands the meaning of keeping all posts in the thread that's pinned to the top of the page. They all feel the need to create their own post. Toxic would lose his mind if he was around today to see that. Evil Clown didn't like what Toxic had to say. Why don't you shut the fuck up, Mr. Wrestling Insider? You get all your information from dirt sheets on the internet, Mr. Smart. Fuck off. Someone called me. And I'm not talking about me. That's just the name that they used. Me said, just to make Toxie happy, I think Kane will be brother love coming back from a religious deprogramming and realizing his place is at the Undertaker's side. His face will no longer be beat red, and he'll dress in a pudgier outfit like the Undertaker wears, all studded and stuff with Batman-like gloves and all the trimmings. 
He'll roll in a wide-bodied coffin, and the bottom will break out, and he'll fall at the Undertaker's feet, all sappy and googly-eyed. Hey, you know, that's kind of like the angle they did on SmackDown many years ago, where Brother Love came out of a giant box, and he hugged the Undertaker before the Undertaker beat the crap out of him. I'll leave you here with this post. We'll end on this. Posted on my birthday, October 6, 2000. A post by Acolyte of Glorious Laparca. Titled, You know, Papa Shango used to be a physician. But he left his practice in disgust because he had so many problems with referrals. And then he shows us a sample conversation here. One doctor says, I'm sending you to another physician for a second opinion. And the patient responds by asking, which doctor? And the doctor says, yes. RSPW with the dad jokes and Papa Shango witch doctor humor here in 2000. That was so bad, I just, I could not help but include it here and uh, end the segment with some, uh, some humor. And I use that word very loosely. So this has been your weekly reminder that wrestling fans, well, they probably shouldn't quit their day job if they have one.